fields are white and the workers are few, but the Lord of the harvest is faithful and true. He'll send forth more workers to accomplish his plan. Good morning and welcome to my father's place. We are looking at the Sermon on the Mount over the next several weeks because I'm taking maybe five or six verses at a time. I mean, what else can I do? Because there's so much in this. And so I always say that there's a lot here, (laughs) but he shows me a lot, and I'm thankful for that. Today's message title is this. Anger is murder. And I'll show you why, and so will he. First, I'll pray. Father, thank you for your son who sets us free from the things that are in our heart that go against your law. Thank you for setting us free, Lord. You said you would make us free indeed and we would no longer be slaves to sin and you will do it if we will believe you. May people hear your words, heed them, see the condition of their hearts. And cry out to you, and you will cleanse them and fill them with your spirit. Holy Spirit, you come in and make us holy. You come in and make us pure. Come in and do that today in many hearts, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I could call this whole from 21 on to the end of chapter 5. But I say, because just like today, back then, the law was taken very literally and not spiritually discerned. And therefore, it was watered down to do's and don'ts. And you, you know, you have to be outwardly obedient in order to be righteous. But righteousness is of the heart. That's why he's going to show that to you today. He wants to fulfill the law in your heart by filling you full of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. So I will read just a few verses. Verses 21 through 26 of chapter 5 of Matthew. You have heard that the ancients were told you shall not commit murder, and whoever commits murder shall be liable to the court. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be guilty before the court, and whoever says to his brother, you good for nothing, shall be guilty before the supreme court, and whoever says, you fool, shall be guilty enough to go into the fiery hell. Therefore, if you are presenting your offering at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your offering there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and present your offering. Make friends quickly with your opponent at law while you are with him on the way so that your opponent may not hand you over to the judge and the judge to the officer and you be thrown into prison. Truly, I say to you, you will not come out of there until you have paid up the last cent. What does all of that mean? Well, I will tell you this right at the outset. He is equating anger with murder. How do I know that? Because... This first verse, you shall not commit murder. Everybody knows that. Thank God I haven't committed murder. I'm all set with God. But if you're angry with your brother, you commit murder. Why? Because hate is at the root of both. And hate is what is in the human heart until Jesus comes and changes it. That is very good news. Especially in these days where hate is everywhere. Everyone hates everyone for the most ridiculous and foolish reasons. It's absurd. But it's not just in the world. I expect that of the world. I expect that of people that don't know Jesus. But I see it in the church with the church wars. And 
oh, all kinds of wickedness, and we, we strike each other with wicked fists, like it says in Isaiah 58. We're cruel in our church politics. And that means there's hate in a whole bunch of hearts that sit in the pews every Sunday morning and even preach from the pulpit. I tell you, here is something I need to say before we go any farther. It is not hate when someone has been filled with the Holy Spirit and can't stop talking about what they have seen and heard, that there is a Savior, that not only can he save you from your past sins, but from the junk that's in your heart, he can clean you up. And there's a day of judgment coming, so you need Jesus. That is not hate. That is a life-giving message. So, if you think I'm hateful because I'm telling you this, check your heart. Beloved, that's a red flag right off quick. Let's go down through the verses. You have heard, verse 21, that the ancients were told you shall not commit murder, and whoever commits murder shall be liable to the court. Thou shalt not murder is the sixth of the Ten Commandments. That's in Exodus 20.13 and Deuteronomy 5.17. You have heard it, Jesus says, to the crowds, to his disciples, everyone who's gathered, the multitudes. He says, you've heard that. Do not murder. And the crowd and the disciples have heard, whoever commits murder shall be liable, that is guilty before the court, that is the Sanhedrin, for them. That one will be judged for his murder. And the sentence for murder was death in Leviticus 24, 17. And you will say, as I used to say, boy, past that one, I haven't committed murder. <laughs> oh, no, 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 don't get too comfortable. He says, but I say, he's going to get at the heart of the matter. What's behind murder? Hate. What's behind anger? Hate. I'm so glad he showed that to me. I said, Lord, I've heard it's a spirit of anger or a spirit, of, and, and you have to rebuke that spirit. No, it's the condition of your heart, beloved. It's got hate in it. You're born that way. But God sent his son who died and rose and ascended and poured out his spirit to forgive you for all the junk you did in the past, all the sin. Let's call it what it is. And then fill you with his spirit and that hate gets crucified with your sin nature. Yay. And you don't hate anymore. So you're not angry anymore. I can't do that. You're right. You can't do that. But he can. He can do it in you. Believe me, he has tested me many times. And I have not hated. Since I've been filled. He says, but I say to you, everyone who is angry with his brother shall be guilty before the court. Everyone who is angry, enraged with his brother, his fellow man, shall be guilty before the court. That one will face God's divine judgment. Not just the judgment of the Sanhedrin, by which they say, oh yes, according to the law, you die because you've killed on purpose, out of hate. Anger is murder. Because... Hate is in your heart, and that's what drives those two things. What a word for the behavior of many inside and outside the church. Shame on you inside the church. You see the condition, the spiritual poverty of your heart, 
and cry out. Heed his words here. He says, if you're angry, there's something in your heart that is going to keep you from entering heaven, no matter if you were saved in an altar or however, it will keep you out. Because there's no hate in heaven. And you can't go there with it in you. Okay. You shall be guilty before the court of the Lord. 1 John 3.15 says this. When I say, you won't enter heaven. Here's why. 1 John 3.15, everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. I pray you would see that at the root of murder and at the root of anger is hate in your heart. And what about angry name calling? We hear it all the time inside and outside the church. I've been to church board meetings. I was a member of the board. Angry name calling is part of the process, sadly. And whoever says to his brother, you good for nothing, shall be guilty before the Supreme Court. Oh, now it's getting really bad. What is this good for nothing? This is raka, and it is worthless, empty one. You're worthless. You're a worthless person. Well, you'd be guilty before the Supreme Court. And that is, when you die and you stand before Jesus Christ, He will say, you have hate in your heart. You may not enter. I warned you. You did not heed my words. You did not see the poverty. You did not want to see the poverty of your heart. You chose not to see it, even though I spoke to you. You did not cry out to me to change your heart. And I came to fulfill the law when I fill you full. But you said, no, I don't need that. Away from me. You evildoer. As I say, I expect the world to do what it's doing now. It's getting worse by the minute. I've never in all my life, 62 years of it, seen such outward, blatant, bold, Anger, hatred, you see it. The world, I expect that of. They're going to be judged by the Lord. They're going to be judged. Some people say, well, I don't like Christianity because it condemns people. No, people condemn themselves by not believing into Jesus. They refuse him. As the Apostle Paul says... Those who are outside, God judges. And that's from 1 Corinthians 5.13. They remained under, under God's wrath. They remain there until they repent, that is, turn from their sin and cry out to be saved and believe into Jesus. And that's from John 3.36. Only then will they be reconciled to God. So the world is under God's wrath until they see Christ and receive him. And the world is already under judgment by God. But so will you be, O Christian, if you have hate in your heart. Look at it. Are you calling anyone worthless and empty? The guy that's lying on the street with a bottle of booze next to him? Begging? Jesus came to save that one too, beloved. Do you have contempt for others? Because these are contempt, issues of contempt, hatred, murder, anger. Jesus warns those who follow him. This is end time that he's speaking of. Matthew 24, 10. Through 13, 
At that time, many will fall away, sin, and will betray one another and hate one another. Many false prophets will rise and will mislead many. Because lawlessness, sin, is increased, most people's love will grow cold, but the one who endures to the end, he will be saved. And let me say again the first verse, at that time many will fall away, sin, and will betray one another and hate one another. Do we see it today? He says this to his followers. He says this of people who are part of the church. They will hate one another. And I see it. But the one who endures to the end, he will be saved. Who doesn't fall for it? Who doesn't listen to the false prophets and false teachers? Who says, Lord, I see the condition of my heart. Change it. Fulfill your law in me by filling me full of your spirit. Glory to God. And finally, he says, and whoever says you fool, which means godless moral reprobate, shall be guilty enough to go into the fiery hell. Guilty enough to go into the fiery hell. I hear many say such words in the world, but I hear it among Christians too. What shall happen to both? You shall both go into the fiery hell. What? I'm saved. Only the one who endures to the end will be saved. It's not just a moment in time. You continue to work it out. You continue to let him work. You take, let him take you to the place where you see that your heart needs an absolute makeover. Hallelujah. Thank you for doing it, Lord. I would still be a hater if it was not for his mercy on me. And I was worthy of hate by him. He does not have hate in him, not a bit. Neither do I, thanks be to God. You shall go into the fiery hell, and some will say, oh, there is no hell, God would not do that. In the New Testament, Jesus speaks of hell 11 times, and it is spoken of by the writer of Hebrews two times. In the book of Hebrews. And some will cry out to me. Ah the power of death and life is in the tongue. Therefore I can speak things in and out of existence. And all kinds of things like that. That's not the meaning of it. That's not the meaning of it beloved. I'll tell you your tongue will get you into great trouble. With the Lord. Even into the fire of hell. Listen to the second half of that proverb. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Oh, yes, I know that one, you'll say. Read the rest. And those who love it will eat its fruit. What is the fruit of the hate that's in your heart that makes you call people godless, moral, reprobates, worthless, that makes you angry? What is the fruit? Judgment. You will be judged. I don't want you to be judged. Jesus doesn't want you to be judged. God doesn't desire that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Repentance. The church doesn't need to repent. Read Revelation 2 and 3. Chapters 2 and 3. The church does need to repent. That's what I'm called to tell her. Do I do it out of hate? No, I do it out of love. If I hated you, I'd just leave you right where you are and say, good riddance. I won't do that. I love you too much. Oh, if you will cry out, he'll move that hate right out. Kill it deader than a doornail. 
Praise be to God. See, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. That is the fruit. You know somebody, whether they know the Lord, whether the Lord has worked in their heart by what they say. That's the fruit of the tongue. Again, those who love it will eat its fruit. Out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's from Matthew 12, 34. What is in your heart? What is in your heart? I tell you, I tell you, anger is not a fruit of the spirit. It's a fruit of the flesh from Galatians 5, 20. Anger. And you will say to me, oh, but the spirit... War is against the flesh and the flesh against the spirit. From 5.17 of Galatians. But I will say, those who are in Christ have crucified the flesh with its lusts and desires. Galatians 5.24. Crucified the flesh with its lusts and desires with the hate that goes with all of that. Crucified. Glory to God. You don't have to have the war going on in you. You don't have to try to keep from sinning. He'll set you free. That's what he came to do. It's the fulfillment of the law to change your heart. So you love to do it. And it's no problem to do it. And you don't sin anymore against him. Glory to God. I've been called a heretic for that one. But then so is Jesus. Verses 23 through 24. Hmm. Hmm. Therefore, if you are presenting your gift to God at the altar, and while you're there, remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and present your gift. What? My brother has something against me and I have to go to him? Shouldn't it be the other way around, Jesus? Oh, no. Oh, no. He's going to show you your heart. If you don't do it, God won't accept anything from you. There's no gift you can give him except the gift of heeding his words, seeing the poverty of your heart and crying out to him. Now, that's a gift. He will dance on that one. Hallelujah. That's from the end of Zephaniah. Even if you're not at fault, you've got to go. And if you are at fault, you've got to go. I remember when my pastor, before he would even work with me to teach me about healing in the scriptures, he said, You need to go to the Lord and pray and ask him if you're right with him. So I did. No answer. He says, okay, here's the second thing you have to do. You need to go before the Lord and ask him if there's any unforgiveness in your heart, if you're holding any grudges. Immediately, my first husband popped in to my spirit. And I said, my first husband. I won't go into the details. It was awful. It was cruel. That was what the Holy Spirit put his finger right on. So I went to God with it and I said, I can't get rid of this. Lord, please take this from me. And it was as if a weight literally came off my shoulders. It really was. So I called him the next day excitedly and said, hey, it's like a weight. And now I know why he didn't answer me when I asked if I was right with him. I wasn't. I still hated my first husband. Beloved. But then I asked him, I cried out, I saw the condition of my heart. I said, oh, Lord, take it. He did. Glory to God. He will. 
Then he cleansed it so it wouldn't be there at all toward anyone ever. Hallelujah. Now there are some who will not reconcile with you, but as much as it is possible with everything that you do, going with an open heart to ask forgiveness, to try to find out what the problem is, if they don't reconcile, then you have done your part. And that's from Romans 12, 18. But if you don't do that, the Lord will not receive anything from you. He will not accept a thing from you until your heart is right. Except that one thing, crying out that he will readily come to your rescue. Glory to God. So why is forgiveness such a big issue? Why do I have to do that? Because like me, you're not right with God. Like me, when I went to the Lord and said, am I right with you? And didn't get an answer. Same thing. Matthew 6, 14 and 15. For if you forgive others their transgressions, that is sins, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. If you forgive them, your Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, then your Father will not forgive your transgressions, your sins. Jesus does not say, Try and forgive. Anymore than he says, try to be good. You can't. <laughs> don't try. He says, forgive. And if you don't, my Father in heaven will not forgive you. Oh, I pray you see the poverty of your heart. So much unforgiveness in the church. It's just, it's just it makes the Lord sad. It makes me sad. There's no need for it. Most of the church doesn't believe that it's possible for a heart to be cleansed. Therefore, they call God a liar. I tell you the truth. And you go to your neighbor, just like it says in Matthew 18, 15 through 17. And if you sin against him, make haste. In all cases, make haste. Because if he has something against you and you're not going to him to try to work it out, guess what? You've got hate in your own heart. Make haste to settle. Listen, verse 25. Make friends quickly with your opponent at law. That is your adversary. Agree with them. Agree with them quickly, readily, without delay while you are on the way to the court. What if you don't do it? Your opponent will hand you over to the judge, God. The judge will hand you over to the officer, Satan. And you will be thrown into prison. Hell. God will say, You have hate in your heart. Satan. Have Adam, and if he still doesn't repent, into hell. That one goes. You're on the way. While you are on the way to the court. You're on your way to the court. Do you know that a day of judgment is coming for Christians? And for the world. I want yours to be a judgment of resurrection. A resurrection of life. Not a resurrection of judgment. You're on the way to that day. When you'll stand before Jesus Christ. What will you say? What is your heart? What's in it? Let him take it. He will. You will not come out of there until you've paid the last cent. 
and there's no way you can pay. At that point, you have told Jesus he's a liar, that he can't fix your heart. You've gone on in your headstrong way saying, huh, I'm never going to forgive that one. I just won't talk to them anymore. I won't say anything when they go by me. I've heard that from a Christian a pastor's wife just recently. Oh, I just didn't look at her. I just didn't say anything to her. Oh, my goodness. Oh, repent. You'll never be able to repay it once you've gone all the way, even with Satan having at you and sifting you like wheat, and you still stand firm against your anger toward that one which is hatred, beloved. You must Know that hell has no exits. Hell has no exits. You will never be able to repay. You will say, but I am saved. And I will say, but you can lose it. Hebrews 10, 26 through 27. For if we go on willfully sinning after receiving the knowledge of the truth. Willfully sinning. After coming into the knowledge of the truth, knowing what God can do and saying, no, I don't need that. Willfully sinning after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. His sacrifice on the cross, you have, you have voided that. but a terrifying expectation of judgment and the fury of a fire which will consume the adversaries. You become an adversary of God when you refuse to do what he calls you to do, what he shows you in your heart. You must forgive. You must ask him to cleanse your heart of the hate of the sinful nature. He will do it. You must cry out. As I've already spoken from Matthew four, uh, excuse me, twenty four ten, people will betray each other and hate each other, and I see it. Anger is murder. Murder stems from hate in the heart. A heart that has not been transformed. He says, stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Wait for the promise of the Father. This is the fulfillment of the promise of the Father that he would put his spirit in you and you would gladly obey his law. Be written on the tablet of your heart like I said last time. My goodness. He presents an impossible standard, Jesus does. I told you he'd do this all the way through so you could see the condition of your heart and cry out. If you will, he will purify your heart. Now, you remember I've spoken of Matthew 18, 23 through 35, the parable of the man who owed the immense debt that he could never repay and He went to his Lord and said, oh, have mercy. And the Lord forgave him everything. An impossible to pay debt. But then he turned around and went to his brother who owed him just a little. And he had him thrown in prison till he paid it. And what did happen to that man? Matthew 18, 32 through 35. Then summoning him, his Lord said to him, you wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not also have had mercy on your fellow slave the same way I had mercy on you? Verse 34, and his Lord moved with anger, that be God's righteous anger. And please don't try to apply that to your feelings toward another. The only time God gets angry is when a heart refuses to be changed. His Lord moved with anger 
handed him over to the torturers until he should repay all that was owed to him. My heavenly father will also do the same to you if each of you does not forgive his brother from your heart. Beloved, but your heart must be changed in order for that to happen. Oh my goodness, you can't do it. But if you will heed his words and see the condition of your heart, it's spiritual poverty today. And cry out, oh my goodness, he will change it. No longer will anger be in your heart. No longer will murder be in your heart. No longer will hate be in your heart. No longer, no longer. It's great news. It's the fullness of the gospel, the fulfillment of the law by you being filled full of the Holy Spirit. So you love God with God's love and obey him. It's the answer to the conundrum of this present day and of all time from the moment Adam sinned onward. Glory to God. Now I will admit to you that there are times when I get a little frustrated, not with the world because I expect them to do what they do, but in trying to show you the truth. But then the Lord reminds me that all I do is speak the truth. And then it's between you and him as to whether you allow him to show you your heart. So, even when I am frustrated with trying to get this across to you, it is not out of hate. It is out of love. Even when I speak hard words, they're words that he gives me so you might see your heart. Because I want you to become what he, not me, what he has made me. And what he has made Jeff is his command. He knows what you need. I pray you would heed. Lord Jesus, may your church hear. May they heed. May they see. And may they cry out. Holy Spirit, send this out in your power and your love, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The fields are white and the workers are few. But the Lord of the harvest is faithful and true. He'll send forth more workers to accomplish his plan. And pour out his spirit.